Okay, let's get started. Uh, we're going to begin a new chapter uh, on generating functions. And uh, this is going to be neat stuff, but we're going to do it very, very quickly. Uh, if you weren't Georgia Tech students, we'd have to do this much more slowly, but you, you're smart guys and you know lots of stuff so we can go pretty quickly. So here's some, here's some little analysis that's just kind of fun. Uh, I like this. So I'm going to start with a line which is the formula for the sum of a geometric series. You remember the, f the formula that you learned back in, probably in high school, but, but also you did it in calculus, that when you have a geometric series and you add up all the terms, the formula is first term over 1 minus the ratio. You remember that? So if I write the geometric series, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the first term is 1 and the ratio is x, so the formula is first term 1 over 1 minus ratio 1 minus x. So there's your, your infinite series form for the expression 1 over 1 minus x. All right, now let's take that expression and substitute into it x replace x by 1 over x. So my second line is just rewriting the first one, replacing x by 1 over x. You agree with that line? OK, now I want you to take a piece of paper and verify the third line. 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over x equals 1. That's just high school algebra, but do the algebra to, to verify that if you add those two expressions together, you get 1. I can, if you're, if you're a little bit, you know, nobody should be stuck on this, but if we do it out loud, look at the second one. The 1 over 1 minus x, if you get a common denominator, it's x minus 1 over x, then the x in the denominator flips up in the numerator, so it's x over x minus 1, and then change the sign, make it minus x over 1 minus x. So then it's 1 minus x over 1 minus x, and that's 1. Okay? So the sum of those two fractions is 1. Now, if you add the two series together, you've got a 1 in each of them. So if you subtract 1, you get 0, but then you get that big long expression, that series is 0. It's valid. We checked it. And I challenge you to explain how you can add up a bunch of numbers, all of which are greater than or equal to zero, and get zero. Okay, now where's the rub in all of this? Why, why I mean, this is, this is algebraic nonsense on the one hand, but it, it has no meaning in the sense of calculus or analysis. Why? Because when you're dealing with infinite series, Taylor series, Maclaurin series, you have the concept of a radius of convergence. So you have an expression which totals to some real number only when x is in a certain range. And the radius of convergence for the first series, the 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 is, is 1 plus x plus x squared plus just use the ratio test. The radius of convergence for this is the absolute value of x has to be less than 1. And remember that when you studied infinite series, you have a radius of convergence, and the series converges absolutely inside that radius, but its behavior at the endpoints can be strange. Now, in this case, the uh, series converges neither at x equals minus 1 or at x equals plus 1. 
At x equals plus 1, you just get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc. And clearly, that doesn't converge. And if x is minus 1, you get 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So the sum alternates back and forth between 0 and plus 1. But it certainly does not converge. All right, but now you can invert the thing. So when you take the series 1 over 1 minus 1 over x, that converges only when the absolute value of x is bigger than 1. So I've, I've completely mixed two series, and I'm talking about using them jointly in an area where neither of them holds. Yeah. So uh, it isn't quite nonsense. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't have any meaning in terms of real number calculations. The study of generating functions is full of examples like this where we will talk about functions which have no meaning in the sense of calculus, but they have meaning to us for a different reason. 